So this was an online survey of 4,023 women between the ages of 25 and 45. And what we were looking at is how many women actually had symptoms that were consistent with actual eating disorders, like anorexia nervosa, bulimia nervosa, binge eating disorder, but also how many women showed other sorts of unhealthy relationships with food and with their body. And what we found was that 65% of women endorsed some sort of problem in the food or body weight area. One of the things that we found was that over 60% of the women who responded to this survey were overweight. And I think that tells us a lot about what their concerns are, because what we also saw were a lot of extreme behaviors to try to control weight. And I think that's really telling us that there's a desperate segment of the population out there who are trying to con control their weight, but they're doing it in unhealthy ways. One of the things that I was very interested in is this old myth that disordered eating behaviors somehow only happen in white upper middle class women. So we really wanted to make sure that this survey captured a whole range of ethnic and racial groups in the United States. And one of the things we did find is that these disordered eating behaviors are not confined to white upper middle class women. These disorders do not discriminate on the basis of age or on the basis of racial and ethnic status. 31% of the women who responded to this survey said that they had purged at some point in their life. And by purging, we mean self-induced vomiting, laxative use, diuretic use, water pills, or diet pills. And that is a large number. And when we looked at that more closely, we found that over half of those women who purged were doing it more than twice a week. So again, I think this is pointing to some desperate measures that women are taking to try to control their weight, but yet measures that are ineffective. But we're focusing on that 75% of women who have some sort of disordered eating symptoms. But what I'm really interested in is those 25% of women who don't have an unhealthy relationship with food or with their body. And I think that might be a treasure trove. If we could find out what motivates those women and what keeps them healthy and gives them a healthy relationship with food in their body, we might have some good insight into helping the rest of the women who are struggling.